Welcome to the Cars Guide Garage. I'm James, and with me are Mel, G'day. and Mitch. Hello. Today, we're going to determine whether it's worth putting fuel in the Supercars Championships tank, uh, address the meanness in our digital orbit, talk about an important newcomer from Toyota, and check in on Crazy Elon in this week's Musk Watch. So stay with us, but first... Believe it or not, this is Cars Guide podcast number 52. Amazing. So we have one year down for the Cars Guide podcast. And thanks to everyone out there that's taken the time to listen and that continues to listen. Thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun. We're always looking for ways to improve and make the show more entertaining and informative. And the start of season two will be next week. So look out. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears open. And you may just notice some changes. So in our first 12 months, we've started to crawl. We're showing signs of walking. Who knows what we're going to do next yeah, week? Yeah, we're still drooling, and um, we still need to be attended to every every couple of hours, <laughs> be that feeding or changing. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're still at that stage. So, yeah, that's that's good news, that we've uh, we've got a year down and looking forward to sailing into the next one. Here's uh, to another year. Exactly. And look. Here's to many more. Speaking of annual events, Bathurst, it's, uh, it's coming up. Yet yep. again, and Mitch, you this week yes. went to have a chat with some drivers, a look at some classic yep. Bathurst chariots, mm. and where were you and what went on? What were the All highlights? Right. So it was Wednesday just gone. Uh, it was held at uh, Circular Quay, Sydney, so you had like the opera house and the background so it was all very beautiful picturesque and all that kind of stuff and they had a fair few um former bathurst winning cars on display yeah there was five and the sixth car was dick johnson's ford mustang that was there to you know pay uh sorry nod to the fact that the mustang's returning oh gotcha so this is the media launch for the race that's in a few weeks yes kind of um so a few, yeah. you were saying it was beautiful, but there are a few rough-headed drivers there that would take the edge off that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you had some blokes called Jamie Winkup, oh. Craig Lowndes, Will like Davidson, oh, yep. da- David Reynolds, uh, Mark Winterbottom. So they were all the Frosty. previous yep. winners of the most yep. recent Bathurst uh, 1000s. Chas Mostert was supposed to be there, but I don't know, he probably got lost on, on, the his, way. on his way down well, he's from not a Gold very good Coast. Driver. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, maybe you're yeah. stuck in the queue at Super Cheap. Oh, but <laughs> I don't know. Possibly. I don't know him for Barrow. So, yeah. in <laughs> fact, um, you know, I get a bit kind of so-so about the the supercars at the moment. What, Mitch, you're, I know you're a big fan. Yeah, Mal, you're an attendee every year. You get up to the mountain, pitch the tent, go all in on it, pretty hardcore. Uh, what do you think, Mitch? What, what what did you walk away feeling when when uh, they're making their big pronouncements about this, that, and the other? Were you excited, or you thought, well, oh, it's just more? What was the big news? So the big news was um, from Foxtel that this year the Bathurst One Thousand is going to be aired um, ad free and in four K. Right, and that that was it. Okay, that they that's weren't the big ad- news. They weren't announcing like, oh, we've got this big um, support. Or yes, category yep. leading up to Bathurst or something like that. Because the thing that leaves me flat as a pancake about supercars is that it just seems to be in the doldrums. You know, there's Falcons running around, and Falcon yep. hasn't Altimas. been on sale. And yep. Altimas. That's like, what the hell is going on? Well, I know supercars always pride themselves. It's just like, oh, you see these cars we're racing. You can buy them in the showroom, and it's like, well, technically you can't. You can't buy a Falcon. You can't buy an Altima. You can't buy a V8 Commodore. No, a, Z- a ZB so V8 at the moment, Commodore. It's just kind of stupid. Yeah, and last year there were a few rounds after uh, they stopped building the VF2. A few rounds where none of the cars <laughs> yeah, <laughs> were right. available in showrooms. That's right. I mean, I I like car racing. I mm. like motorsport, but the the great premier category for Australian motor racing at the moment to me feels a bit dull and so so. I'm, for what it's worth, I'm quite excited by the prospect of the Mustang yeah. coming back. And was there a lot of chat about that when you were down there? No, not really. They kind of just skimmed over it. Really? They were just like, oh, yeah, there's the Mustang, Dick Johnson's. Oh, yeah, that that's racing next year. And that was pretty that much was it. it. So um, probably, but, because, probably because it was a Bathurst media launch. Is yeah. There, <laughs> is there the prospect through the HSV connection that the Commodore will morph into a Camaro? Was there any talk about the Camaro making an appearance? Because that'd be pretty good. No, oh, they kind of danced around it. Really? Bit. Yep. I so. think they're keen. You're yeah. Really? Yeah. I know um, the Andretti team, they were talking about they've got interest in possibly bringing in the Camaro. Camaro. Because yep. that, that, I think, whether you loved it or hated it, the Holden versus Ford formula for V8 supercars yeah. 
certainly got a lot of people going and, mm. and generate a lot of interest. And I think it still worked when they were racing Sierras, which were yep. you know, highly mm. strung four-cylinder British Again, machines. not sold here. Yeah. yeah. Well, and never sold here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but at least the Camaro is yeah, yeah, sale. Yeah, technically, it's purchasable. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So what? it's uh, it's interesting that the I think it was the 2017 regs that opened up the engines to uh, V6s etc. Yes, that's yes, right. Yes. So no one's running V6s. Yeah, Everyone's that, still that, running V8s. But that got canned. At least we're one. changing the shape of them, mm. uh, which opens up all sorts mm. of aero uh, it does. variables. Yeah. It does. Um, you know who knows who's going to be better at what tracks. Um, so the, you know the cars under the skin are very very okay. They're identical. Yeah. Uh, but. At least we've got some evolution and, and variables it's, that are coming back is, into the it's sport. It's kind of the poster on the bedroom wall factor. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I used to love the, the champion touring cars that were running around at that time. Um, and you had your allegiances and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, you can't, it's hard to bond yep. um, with a car that's just like an Altima. I mean, <laughs> and, and it's even, it's no longer available. And you want something that captures your imagination. Yeah. I th- you know, ZB Commodore as well. It's, oh. you know. <laughs> yeah. Van Gies will make it exciting, but so I think I think if we're talking about the the kind of roller coaster of popularity yeah. and where it is in terms of strength, I think it's still coming off a pretty low yeah. ebb, yeah, yeah. But Mustang will put a bit more well, life I back into so. supercar, and then if the Camaro joins, there's another. That'd be awesome. There's another yep. tick, and sorry to cut you off. I would love to see. Um, the Dodge Challenger also be brought into it because it will be like the evolution of the big three from the early 70s where you yeah. had the Tarana, the Falcon, and the Charger. Charger yeah, you got nice, Mustang, Camaro, that'd and be, Challenger. That'd get that the would crowds, yeah. You'd I'd have be, people paying I'd tickets. I'd be so into tickets. that. Yeah. That would be cool, but I wouldn't hold my breath, Mitch. Yeah, I'm not holding my but, breath, but, but it, one can dream. <laughs> but it does seem feasible that there could be a Camaro mm. if the Andretti you know, camp is yeah. interesting. That sounds really good. Yeah. Um, but my overall observation with the sport is that people don't follow teams as much as they used to. It's, right. These days, to me, it seems about the driver. Oh, I, and people I don't follow know. drivers across teams. It'd be interesting to uh, hear what our listeners think, but I, for me, it's always been about the driver. You know, the, the yep. team was pretty much secondary. The, the yep. driver's the mm-hmm. hero, you know, the one that you look up to and whatever car they were driving, that that was it. Yeah, certainly during the um, the glory days of Brock Moffat, etc. Yeah. HDT Johnson. and but Ford I think dealers. And during the Lowndes, Scaife, Red Army you know, yep. it was just the sea of red was yeah. just Gibson Motorsport. blind support. Yeah. All that preceded it. Yeah. yeah. But um, anyway. All right. So the vibe you got I'll be out of it the race. overall, Mitch, yeah. was it's kind of steady as she goes. With you know, here's pretty, a small announcement, but it's yeah, going to be more of the pre- same. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. it's funny um, when they made the announcement. I actually went through Facebook to like read some of the comments about this announcement, and a lot of people were saying last year they made a big deal about how it was supposed to be um, ad free. But what happened was the what they would do is they would go to an ad break but then they would have the actual oh, race like down in the in corner yeah. Ah, yeah. Right. yeah so there's a lot of people saying oh is that is that what they mean by it's going to be ad free this year again yeah. if Actually, so that's a flip bit of the rubbish. ratio and have well, the race on with the ad in a yeah. little uh, screen inset I think that would be uninterrupted yeah, but right. if there's an ad, it's not ad free. Yeah. Uh, I haven't actually watched it on TV in more yeah. than seventeen well, you're, years. You're there because you know I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. But and Mel does take his race suit and bash hat just in case he gets the call up. <laughs> That's my pajamas. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, can I say, one thousand kilometres of Bathurst without an ad sounds like a hell of a taxing uh, day on my bladder. True. It would also I'm not be, sure it's a good thing. Yeah, it'd be taxing for the uh, commentators too on the on the broadcast. That's Indeed. a lot of TV mm. to put to air live. Indeed. You know, yeah. I wonder amazing. what tactics they're going to employ to get through those uh, God moments. I guess we'll find out in two weeks' time. Correct. Ah, it's brilliant. Now, um, speaking of you know old hands and uh, working hard at the wheel, uh, let's have a word from our sponsor. <laughs> In 1914, two Aussie visionaries decided it was time for a new kind of car. After meeting face down on the floor of the Bridge Hotel in the Chuka, mates Ern Alcock and Horry Wheeler began working on their dream, and three years later the Winton Motor Company was born. Our founders knew Australians needed a rugged car for tough local conditions, with no-nonsense performance and breakthrough design. Their first production model, the 15, known to Winton enthusiasts the world over as the Mongo, was an unstoppable 15-cylinder force of nature, which set the benchmark for the Wanderers, Wildcats and Turbos that have followed in its illustrious wheel tracks. 
As Prime Minister Billy Hughes, standing next to the first Mongo, uttered those famous words, she's a ute, Australians knew they had a winner on their hands. And 101 years later, Winton remains at the frontier of progress and performance, with the groundbreaking 2018 Winton Turbo exported to more than 100 countries. We think Earn and Horry would approve. The Winton Motor Company. Go, Australia. Winton Motor Company, fantastic. Where's Frosty? That's the question. Frosty, I oh, just wish he'd, uh, for once, commit and get in here. But he's still <laughs> in New York. going to get the car on the grid at Bathurst. He's still in New York. He's Again. been over there for the US Open tennis. We know the whole Serena thing. You know, he was he was in the background there. But uh, now Hurricane Florence has kept him, unfortunately, on the East Coast in the US. But Busy it's man. given him a chance uh, to catch up with Donald Trump because they, they go back. Quite a long way. Really? Yeah, yeah. Is wow. it from the Apprentice days? Yeah, Frosty had a hand <laughs> in that. He was one of the celebrities. Yeah, there were some Wintons in the background okay. of some of those scenes, if you noticed. <laughs> right the on. sharp-eyed among you will have noticed some Good product there. placement. But sadly, that hurricane has wreaked havoc and it's taken lives. That's, that's horrendous. But Frosty's coaching led to one of the president's most insightful comments this week uh, when he said, this event is the, quote, wettest we've seen from the standpoint of water. So... Um, Frosty is pretty proud of that because it really got the point across. Mm. And I think he's had a hand in um, some, adding some clarity to uh, Donald Trump's uh, speech making. So that was fantastic. A pat on the back for Frosty. But our man Chesto Chesterton, he has been in Spain. Yes. And Mal, he's driven a much anticipated car. Tell yes. us all about it. We have finally driven the new Supra, the A90 Supra. We still haven't seen it. <laughs> In that it's still wearing <laughs> camouflage. And how long has it been teased for? Oh, years. Forever. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see it before the end of the that's year. That's right. This is still a part of the tease in that yeah. it's yeah, driving. He's stringing it, it right out. Yeah. But I, say, I must say his initial uh, impressions are very good. Uh, we know that, you know, yes, it's a Z4 under the mm. skin, but it's a Z4 with a roof. And we know that Toyota's had a, a big hand in calibration of engine, chassis, etc. And it's sounding like they're living up to their promise of being more of an 86, a big brother to 86, and that it's lively and fun and a bit less BMW, which has that sort of, needs to have that element of refinement about it. So it sounds exciting. It does. I mean, it's interesting in the video, if people want to have a look on YouTube or on our site, Chesto behind the wheel said, for all those people that have been wanting an 86 with more power and torque, yeah. I, I think I'm in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the thing is, uh, a top spec 86, what's about $40,000, somewhere thereabouts, this Supra is going to be, and uh, it'll be in the 70s uh, yeah. for sure. So you, It's got to be under 100. Yeah, it's going to be double um, mm. the price of an 86. So, you know. 370Z, look out. Yeah. Yeah, I but, think oh, it, that's on it. That's been on its last legs for <laughs> years now. Yeah. But the grey market supers, or the you know the Japanese domestic market mm. supers that have come into this market, there's obviously demand for it. It's oh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people that love that brand, mm. love the cars. Oh, and America has a, still has a glow about it. Yeah, after yeah. Fast and the Furious. Yeah, similar uh, to the Skyline. Yeah. But yeah. I think there'll just be a lot of people ready to stump up yeah. their cash to own one in Australia. Yeah. And so we still haven't seen the skin properly, but. Even with the camouflage, you can tell it's going to be a pretty bloody sexy the, machine. The proportions you, you are like right, the look aren't of it? they? I, I don't love the head and tail lights, but I think the proportions and the roof line is outstanding. And I think the rear three quarter view with that ducktail spoiler, uh, you know, hello two sixty Z of the modern era. Yeah, I suppose so. Because it's, it's, it's called is it the A ninety? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and the the previous one A A eighty. I think it's got a similar overall proportion to that car. Like yep. there's a real uh, lineage there that you can see. Mm. And I always thought the proportions of that A80 were pretty good. That was that was a good looking car. Yep. Um, I remember driving a twin turbo in Germany with the chip, like the limiting chip pulled out of it. We were wow. getting up into the high 200s in that car. Um, that had some real get up and go. Wow. Yeah. So um, it's staying true to the, the turbo straight six, mm. yep. twin scroll turbo. I don't think we uh, we know if there's going to be a manual available yet, but it'll at least have uh, one of the BMW autos. A lot of our uh, YouTube commenters demanding a manual. Yeah. They absolutely <laughs> say they must have a manual. Well, BMW make it possible, so come on. Yeah. It's got to happen. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Who knows? That's fantastic. Now, speaking of commentary <laughs> online, we're going to move to our segment, Blowing a Gasket. Regular listeners and viewers will understand where we're going here. Basically, the internet is horrible, but we're not no. scared of it. All right? We're, well, we're, I am. We're <laughs> steering it down. It's mostly horrible. <laughs> 
Our man, Mr. Pritchard, has scoured the interwebs, basically our website, our YouTube channel, our social media pages, um, and he's looked for some of the nastier or more challenging feedback and um, some of the more spiteful ones that might not have even seen the light of electronic day. They may not have been on the page for everyone to read. Yep. And inspired by Jimmy Kimmel's Mean Tweet segment, we're going to read them and respond live without having seen them prior. So we're actually going to crack them out of the oh, We're all in for envelope. a surprise here. Here it is. So I'm pretty nervous. Yep. I'm going to start off, I think. Okay. For me, quote, from Zachariah uh, Lafreniere. Tuck in your damn shirt, sloppy. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Aimed at you. Yeah. Aimed at me. I'm not. A, I'm just not a tucker. All right. <laughs> Is that June Deli Watkins with an? Address? I don't know. I'm not a. Sh- I'm not a shirt tucker. Um, that trademark looks satanic. Now that was the Maserati Ghibli S. Okay, each to their own. I suppose you can. They're referring to the badge, the logo. Don't know. Mal, over to you, friend. Okay. Ooh. Here satanic it comes. tridents. Uh, is my name next to it? Down the bottom. Just ah, oh, excellent. That's MT. Oh, beg your pardon, Mitch. Over to you. Oh, sorry. It's me. <laughs> Over to you. All right. What have I got? This um, is live. Oh, here we go. Uh, um, this uh, lose the stash from <laughs> AOS Royal. Um, Weren't you born with it? Yeah, I, I came out with it, and I was also I also came out asking for a four X gold. I was like, yeah, crackers open a cold one. I love. can imagine. I can imagine a baby Mitch with a mark. <laughs> oh well, fashion advice. Uh. MF, that's me, Malcolm Flynn. Why do you speak like everything is a question? From Wakatipu on the M5 review. Yeah. Um, Why do you speak like everything's a question, (laughs) Mal? Is that so? (laughs) Uh, I'll be on the lookout for that. (laughs) Is it an upwards inflection thing? I've no idea. You'd have to ask him. I can't answer that question, Wacker, but uh, I'll be on the lookout for unnecessary question marks. Uh, There's another one. I'll go for it. Uh, from Sam Toure, I think. Yep. This car has way more talent than you can explore. I don't believe you've ever owned an M car. Well, not many people have. Wow. But I've certainly driven plenty. <laughs> way more talent than you could explore. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's harsh. Shot so five. Sam Toure is a, is the M5 expert, obviously. Okay. <laughs> but um, you're right. I haven't owned an M car. I'd like to. Yeah. But have uh, you owned just a normal like three series with an M badge on it? Because I'm pretty sure that counts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's what Wack has got? Yeah. Is it? Oh, Sam. <laughs> oh, Sam. Sorry. Def- definitely. Yes. I'm not 318 sure. I. Anyway. Oh, hang on. I've got another one. Oh, good. Oh, Go wow. For one. Worst vid ever. Right there. Worst vid ever, right this there. This is from Fear No Beer. So he's a, <laughs> he's a confident, he, she he, is a confident individual. Well, look, it, it's, it's constructive feedback about. like that that gives you somewhere to go, Mal. At least you'll learn something from it and you might be able to act on it. Indeed. And that was on the Nissan GTR Nismo 2017 review, which is where they did the Australian launch at Mount Panorama. Um, fair enough. We've come a long <laughs> way since then, re-video, but uh, it doesn't detract oh, from the Oh, you're being car. so civilised. What would you say, Mitch? Oh. Well, we'll get to more of Mitch's feedback yeah. in a minute. <laughs> okay. Over to you, Mitch. Oh, Go, okay, Mitch. then. I uh, think I was supposed to pass that around. Sorry, of... everyone. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Hold on. Here we go. Um, all right. Here we go. This is from... Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, here we go. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> creepiest outro ever. And that's from uh, Blake Swan. Creepiest and outro. that was in my Honda Jazz video, which is where I was sitting in the boot and I opened it up and I had my sunnies on, took them off, and I'm just like, well, if you like that, you should subscribe for more. So, um, is creepy yeah, that's what you're aiming creepy. for, Mitch? Oh, well, I thought the Mo kind of made that obvious. <laughs> All right, uh, another comment. It's good to see you watch the whole video, though. Oh, this is also from AOS Royal. He's are you, how many t- he's commented twice on the same video. Um, it's not high on die, it's Hyundai. Indeed. Yeah, so well, actually, we get a lot of commentary from, I think, people in the US. Because as far as I understand it, when you're in America, Hyundai is pronounced Hyundai. Yeah. It's, it's H-U-N-D-A-Y, Hyundai. And in Korea, it's more typically Hyundai. Hyundai, that's how they say it. But when the brand first arrived in Australia, it was very much Hyundai. Yep, and well, that's fact, what I grew up. There was advertising saying, say hi to Hyundai, yeah. or however you say it. I can't even say it anymore. Evidently, it's still 1986 in Queensland, where <laughs> Mitch grew no. up. 
last year. Yeah. But uh, anyway, occasionally we get a high Hyundai slipping through because yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any more for me? I think there is. Uh, this wasn't a review, more like an advert. You should probably subscribe to Doug DeMuro to learn a few tips about reviewing a car. Ooh. Is that from Doug? <laughs> yeah, might, might be. So, uh, wow. I like Doug. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I happily take feedback from anywhere. I suppose I do need a few tips on how to review a car. Oh, it? we can yeah. always get better. Oh, Not sure. Gaz Lowe. Okay, Gaz Lowe. Good on you, Gaz. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Well, yeah. we don't do ads and never will do ads. No, exactly. A lot of people uh, have this strange belief that somehow we've got uh, bags of cash in the glove box mm. to uh, to make us uh, think a certain way about a car. Nothing well, could be further from the truth. That just reminds me of some of the comments I saw on our recent hatchback compar- compar- uh, c- comparison. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, f- the first few comments was just like, how much did Toyota pay you? Yeah, it's really guys? odd. It's a pretty yeah. common uh, misconception out there. So Yeah, I think there's a bit of it out there, but certainly not within the Cars God uh, ranks. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have when... one more. Okay, go for it, Mel. Uh, this Final is from one. The Maloney. Uh, the Maloney. Not just any Maloney, The Maloney. All right. Uh, sorry, but this guy is not a car enthusiast. Oh, wow. I'm not sure I should bother reading any wow. further. No. Just stop right there. Let's <laughs> see follow up with I on found that. a mistake. Uh, this is on my E63S review All from right. uh, probably about 18 months ago now. Mm. Okay. Uh, it's so obvious what by what he seems to be focused on in relation to performance, handling, interior, etc. Not to mention anyone who reviews a car without taking their blazer off is not driving seriously. Well,. Oh. We were driving on the road, so... <laughs> Taking I their blazer off. I can't say we were going for a lap time there. <laughs> and it was a chilly day, so blazer was on. You wear blazers, Mel. Occasionally. So what's the difference between a blazer and a jacket? I'm not sure. Angus Young, that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So a school uniform has a blazer. <laughs> Perhaps. Okay. All right, well, that's... Anyway... That's that's ventilating some of the uh, the hate that comes our way. Thank you very much. All feedback is welcome. Yep. And keep uh, it coming. <laughs> receive, keep it coming. Yeah, yeah let us look, know. Just look at the evolution of the uh, the podcast. Yeah, we listen, we change, yep. we try to. Yeah. Now, we're in the shed. We're in uh, part of the garage. We're in the the corner, like the the working part of the garage. And this is where we talk about <clears throat> what we've actually been driving uh, during the week. Mal, kick us off. Uh, a couple of things. First of all was the I've Ranger, had, Raptor. I've had uh, another purple patch of a week, it seems. Yep. Uh, I actually had the Audi R8 RWS for the weekend, oh. last weekend. Uh, and it's, it's yeah, my first time driving the RWS. Chesto drove it at Phillip Island on launch. Uh, it's pretty sweet. You do get a bit more, uh, it's a bit more lively through the rear end, and it's quite easy to provoke uh, the rear tyres. Um Still not as exciting as a Huracan, but it's also only $300,000. It's the killer. <laughs> Bargain. Uh, but get in soon, because uh, I think they're all sold, but uh, they're only made uh, 999 on the dash, uh, sorry, worldwide. Uh, but each one has a number one on the dash. Just so. a thousand cars for worldwide consumption? Yeah. Yep. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's not many cars. Yeah. And but they anyway, all, they all have one on the dash. Yeah. So you don't know cheap, the actual <laughs> build number. Rather you than have. printing out 999 different ones, yeah. they've just got one badge and they've all got it. And they might have saved a couple of dollars there. <laughs> yeah. But um, from that, uh, I uh, finally managed to get a steer of the Ranger Raptor, which is arguably the most exciting car of the year mm-hmm. so far. So far, yeah. And God, it looks fantastic. Mm. Yeah, right. Looks Tough. fantastic. 33-inch yep. all-terrain tyres, substantial suspension lift, pumped arches, and, mm. you know, I'm a bit of a sucker for pumped arches. So it arches. does look like something that's come out of an aftermarket treatment, doesn't it? You sure know, does. Ford's really captured that pretty well. Sure does. It makes me want to go jumping sand dunes. <laughs> right. Mm. Now, Mitch, what's uh, what's been your vehicle of uh, choice? You've, you've just put yourself behind the wheel of something fairly Mainstream, haven't you? Yes, I've been lucky enough to get behind the wheel of a Honda HRV VTIS. Okay. And my biggest problem with the HRV and a few Hondas is the multimedia system. Oh, yeah. Okay. Still. It, because it feels so outdated. It's not that responsive. The clarity is very n- not, not up to scratch, you would say. The reversing camera seems quite pixelated it's that that's my biggest 
annoyance. It's a generation it. behind the, the yeah. Civic and the CRV, yeah. which is launched subsequent to it. Mm. In many ways, the HRV is our favourite small SUV. Mm. It's certainly got the best packaging. Yeah. Uh, reasonably priced. Drives all right. Yeah. Looks all right. Yeah. Is the HRV CarPlay capable yet? No. Still not. Yeah, it's, yeah, even with the mild update that they yeah. did recently. That's so they've updated the safety, et cetera, et cetera, added but an RS, but no CarPlay. Yeah, yeah. which might be uh, enough for some buyers to turn away and go buy those, something else. Like a Hyundai Kona. Exactly. It's those kinds of things that if you're a person about to buy a car and you're out there test driving, you've got so much to focus on yeah. that the finer points of the audio and the multimedia mm. are probably going to be a little down your order. Yeah. But it's the stuff you use every day yeah, that exactly. can become so annoying. And if it's not really where it needs to be, that's where a Cars Guide review, just a plug, can add value because, you know, we're looking at those kinds yeah. of things and like we say, oh, beyond the test drive. Mm. And really that's one of those things. That's a classic example. Yeah. And in all fairness, if you have an experienced car player, Android Auto, you're probably going to think, no, oh, I don't need yeah, that. Yeah, doesn't matter. But I tell you what, once you have, mm. you never want to go back. Yep. Driving along and it'll give you anything you ask for. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, mm. um, I've been driving an A200 Merc A-Class. Oh, yes. A new A-Class. New A class, and I know the look of that car has tended to divide opinion pretty strongly. I'm in the quite like it camp. Right. Uh, I I find it an appealing. I like the simplicity of it, mm. the almost minimalist exterior. It's a bit less try hard than the first gen. I think oh, so. Sorry, the previous. It, gen. it gets it gets a little more uh, complex, a little flashier inside. A couple of screens, mm. kind of Siamese together, and mm. and presents this really high tech. Uh, thing I think it's overwrought. I think mm. the media. Funny you were talking about the multimedia mm. system. Same with me. There's too much going on. Even mm. even living with the car for a while, you're thinking there's way more here than I and want. And it's become a trackpad. Yeah, like a Lexus. Every Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. Um, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's um. It does work a bit better than what's yeah, in the Lexus. But, you know, once again, if you're using CarPlay or Android Auto, <laughs> this is not an issue. But um, just I found you know you've got huge screen basically the more than half the width of the dashboard. Yeah. Uh, but you adjust the climate control and the climate control reading is hidden down behind the steering wheel down here. Exactly. And you're sitting there twiddling the, the thing going, where are we? Where, where's the temperature? You just yeah. want some basic stuff mm. to be easily seen and adjusted. So there's that. That's probably a second tier kind of issue. Mm. The first thing I noticed was having come straight out of our three-car Comparo where it was a, a Mazda 3 and an i30 and a Toyota Corolla. Which you can read and watch on carsguide.com. Exactly. I mean, and all those cars, we were trying to determine the best car under $25,000. Here's this car, an A200, and it's nudging up towards 50 k uh, And it's got a, a torsion beam rear end, and I don't think it, it rides as well as those three hatches that we oh. were driving. I, I think that I think the Cor- really a torsion beam. Yeah, on the base car, on the base wow. 200. So I think the Corolla, that TNGA platform, is got its nose in front of this car at half. You know, getting on for half the price. Ooh, yeah. Mercedes won't like hearing that. No, well, look, <laughs> you just call it the way you yeah. see and feel it. And um, certainly on driving the car, um, that's the way I thought it was. It's only a 1.3 um, liter engine. Uh, but it produces 120 kilowatts, uh, which is plenty, and 250 newton meters. It gets along quite yep. well. And I'm not saying it's a bad car. I'm just saying that there are some others that are in a much lower price yep. bracket that are giving it a solid run for its money. The Corolla rides much better. Yeah, yeah. So uh, nice and light in the nose, though. I find with the A yeah. class. Oh, it's got some redeeming redeeming features. There's a lot of technology that's unseen in it. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway. all right. Now Corolla. Anything, um, anything else from you guys? Are we? Uh, that's all we've been driving this week. That's it. Good. All right. Well, we now move on to Musk Watch. <gasps> well, what a top-notch week it's been for <laughs> Just Elon. Just gets better for him. Uh, three or four main things not going uh, his way. The U.S. Justice of Department is formally investigating uh, the dear leader for his taking Tesla private uh, tweet, funding secured. The share price has dropped by around 25% uh, since he made that tweet. It's sitting at around $283. Was that this week, the tweet? No, no, that was several okay. weeks ago, okay, right. that tweet. 
Um, so the US okay. DOJ, Department of Justice, doesn't muck around. Um, and Tesla short sellers will probably be cheering, ironically, <laughs> because that's who he was trying to sting, um, allegedly, with that tweet. Number two, the US Securities and Exchange Commission is continuing its civil, as in not criminal, but civil investigation into what Bloomberg claims is, quote, misleading pronouncements on manufacturing goals and sales targets. Now, we've been talking about that for months and months and months, that there are these wild claims not met all through, um, you know, the, the commentary that Elon Musk wants to put out there. So he's being called on it for that. Plus, he's being sued for defamation by Thai cave hero Vernon Unsworth. So finally, that guy has pulled the trigger on no. a defamation suit. That would not be a cheap case. Not be cheap. So, okay, Elon Musk is a billionaire. It's probably uh, a rounding error as far as he's concerned in terms <laughs> of uh, money, whatever um, this person wants. I think it's $100,000-odd plus costs. Um, I'm sure he's just trying to make a point that just because you're rich, you can't get away with this kind of stuff. So there are those three things. And when you look at the Bloomberg Model 3 production tracker, this week it's 3,274 against the stated target of 5,000 and 6,000 by the end of the year. So that's around 200 down on last week and makes a month under 5,000. So wow. there are a couple of weeks where it got up there to 5,000. Now it's dropped back to what I would argue is the natural level, the production capacity of the wedding marquee next to the uh, plant in Fremont. And we'll see where it goes next week, but that's not good news either. Just uh, keeps going down. Just keeps going down. Mm. And it's mm. September. Exactly. <clears throat> so, end of the when a couple of months at five thousand and more, you're thinking, great, the trajectory is there. But yep. oh, now it smacks of pull out all stops. Everybody, hands on deck. We've got to get a couple of weeks of five thousand cars out the door. And out they went. Some with interiors, with one a different panel on the right rear door. Blah blah blah. Bumpers falling off. They did that, but uh, now they're back to what I would say is a natural run rate. And Australian deliveries are still a couple of years Long off, way away. we believe. Oh, exactly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, that's a perfect note on which to end our first birthday podcast. Happy uh, birthday, James. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Mitch. Thank and you, thanks to our producer, Marsden. Uh, you know, light travels faster than sound. That's why he appears bright until you hear him speak. Um, and thank you, you for back. listening over the last 12 months and today. Please give us your thoughts on anything we've discussed today. Search for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram and use the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. You can listen to and watch us on YouTube. And if you're an iTunes devotee, please rate and review us. I hope you can join us next week. Until then, a father is washing the family car with his son. About 10 minutes in, the kid asks his dad, do you think we could use a sponge instead? <laughs>